I give uh, Matt and Iowa State credit. Uh, they did a great job. Um, they outplayed us in uh, all three phases. Uh, I thought their uh, offensive line did a really nice job. Obviously, Purdy's a good player, uh, a number of tight ends, so very good job by, by Matt and Iowa State on offense. And then um, our, our offense had a great first drive, and we couldn't finish the drive, and then kind of sputtered uh, after that. And so frustrating uh, in all phases. Um, talked about that to the guys. We, we need to improve, get better, and we can't – uh, we can't worry about uh, things we can't control. You know, we got hammered with COVID the last uh, two weeks, and um, we can't worry about that. And I know it, it stinks for the guys when there's a number of guys that can't make the trip because they get pulled for, for COVID. But uh, we, we've got to move on from that, and that's just the reality. That just is going to happen, um, and it, it sucks. But uh, uh, nothing that they can do about it. They just got to play with whoever we have and, and get ready to go. And uh, – uh, so, a uh, disappointing day, and uh, we'll bounce back from it, and uh, uh, guys have good resolve. Kels? Chris, how does your team bounce back from a game like that? With great leadership and um, uh, guys stepping up and guys um, taking an ownership and, and, and the fact of, you know, you can't let it, it – it should sting. It hurts. It's, it has to. But we, we have to move on. Um, and get ready to go uh, on Monday because we've got another tough road trip to, to Baylor. And uh, um, we need to improve. We need to learn from it, and we need to improve. And that's the first time have seen uh, a whole lot of Nick Oss this season. Just what did go into the decision to play him in the second half and, and pull Will after the second half? A little bit of both. Uh, I thought Will took a pretty good shot um, early in the second quarter. And uh, – Kind of got rattled a little bit because of that shot. And then uh, um, after we threw the interception, I, I just thought, let's let uh, Nick have an opportunity. I didn't think the game was going uh, the right way. Let's let Nick have an opportunity and see what he can do. He's earned the right. He's had great practices, been with us the whole time. I wanted to see what he could do. Um, and uh, I didn't want to have Will take any more shots because we weren't really doing a great job of protecting. Uh, and they were teeing off. And so I wanted Nick to have an opportunity. Thanks, Coach. Appreciate it. Ryan? Hey, uh, Chris, just how difficult is it for, for the defense when you're missing two, two guys like Justin Hughes and Eli Sullivan? Well, there's no question it's difficult. Um, but that was the hand we were dealt. And so somebody else has got to step up. And I, I thought, you know, I'll watch the film. You know, Deuce and, Deuce and Cody did some nice things. The issue we had was – Usually it's splitting time with four guys taking a lot of reps, and instead those two guys got to take uh, uh, every rep. And then we lost another one on Thursday that was their backup. Uh, and so, you know, it was those two had to take the, go the distance. Um, and then Nick and Ryan came in a little bit late, uh, and they did some good things. But it, uh, no question when you lose um, your leader in Justin and, and just a phenomenal football player in, in Eli, it takes a dent to the rotation more than anything. Is is there a chance at all now that, that Nick might start next week? Or is it, I mean, Will still the unquestioned I, guy? I don't have any idea about that. We'll, we'll evaluate it over the week. And, and, I, and Chris, I apologize if it sounds like a stupid question, but was, was there anything you saw today that you felt like was a positive? Or was it just like there, there's not a lot good when you lose like this? Oh, no, we didn't play well enough. You're not going to find any silver linings in it. We, we need to get better and continue to improve. And, and uh, our guys, we have good resolve. We have some leaders in there that uh, uh, we'll make sure that uh, we get it corrected and step up. Thank you. You bet. John? Yeah, Chris, I guess uh, I know it's been a tough week, but throughout the week, did, did you have any kind of inkling that something like this might be coming? Um, no, you never think it's going to be like that. Uh, and it may, maybe isn't so bad if we could stick the first one in the end zone and make it seven to seven and, and get a little life rather than uh, not scoring. And uh, then they take it 97 yards and score. Um, and then it kind of snowballed a little bit in that second quarter. But uh, um, no, I, I thought we had a good week of preparation. I knew we were going to be really thin at a couple of positions. And I was hopeful that we could 
be on the field more offensively because obviously where we were really hurting was on defense uh, from a number standpoint, but uh, we couldn't stay on the field on offense and, and on defense, we couldn't get off the field. Did you feel like as the game wore on and it turned into more of a blowout that effort was any kind of an issue with you guys? No, uh, no, no. Um, I, I didn't think so at all. The, our kids play hard and, and they, um, they wouldn't do that to, to themselves. They wouldn't do that to each other. Appreciate it, Chris. Thanks. Fitz. Coach, um, how monumental mental were third downs in the early part of this game? Well, that was our biggest emphasis in um, pregame as well as throughout the week is we had to be really good on both sides of the ball in third down because it would allow somebody to control the game and control the tempo. And obviously, Iowa State won that battle on both sides of the ball, so they were able to stay on the field. And we had uh, – several opportunities. We had an opportunity to get off the field the first third down of the game, and we don't get off the field um, because we uh, we blow a coverage. Um, so uh, that was critical. And then after the first drive, I don't know if we can converted another third down. And if we did, it wasn't uh, wasn't very many of them. So it was uh, it was a really a, a big key. 62 yards on that first drive of the game for your offense, 87 the rest of the game. Does it just feel like absolutely nothing would work offensively after that first drive? Yeah. Uh, they did some nice things with, with starting to pressure more, uh, but we didn't sustain the line of scrimmage well enough uh, up front. And uh, then we can't be in third and eight, third and nine. We need to be in third and three and third and four to have an opportunity. And um, that's why we went for it on a couple of fourth downs, just to try to keep our defense off the field. And uh, it just wasn't in the card say. We just didn't make enough plays. And, and it's the one thing about it is we did talk. Nobody can point any fingers because I didn't think defense played very well. I didn't think offense played very well. And uh, um, you know, we didn't do enough things on special teams. You immediately began trying to get the guys to wipe this clean and get this behind them because you still have things on the table. You can still go six and three in the big 12. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but uh, I don't want them to forget this feeling. I, this one needs to sting. And so uh, it's going to hurt for the next 24 hours. And then uh, when we come back in uh, on, on Monday and it's, it's not a short week, but it's going to seem like a short week with Thanksgiving, you know, we have to go to work and we have to continue to improve. We, we, have to get better on both sides of the ball. And I don't know if we're going to get any more guys back this week. Uh, I just don't know on that respect. So whoever's available, they've got to step up and, and uh, uh, realize that they may have to play every snap of, of the game. If uh, uh, Lord willing, we're able to get through the rest of the week in COVID, we may have the same group. Thanks, Coach. Last one here, Michael. Yeah, Chris, uh, do you have kind of a comparison point to something, a uh, setback of this nature? Well, anytime, uh, to me, anytime you have a loss, it's a setback. I, I'm not, you know, whether you lose 20 to 18 or 45 to nothing, it's still a loss. And so, um, I, I, there's, like I said, there's no, there's no moral victories or anything like that or silver linings. You just, all you can do is go back to work and continue to try to improve. And, and that's what we talked about to the guys in the locker room is, you know, we're going to find out about the character and resolve uh, of this team. And I think we have tremendous character within this locker room and tremendous leadership. And um, we're going to challenge guys. Uh, and it's not just the, the, the captains. It's not just the seniors. We need to challenge the freshmen and the redshirt freshmen to lead in their class. We played a lot of young kids that um, hopefully don't like this feeling and to realize that, you know what, I, I've got to step up. I've got to do more in the weight room. I've got to do more off the field. Our issues uh, continue to be us holding each other accountable uh, in all phases, not, not, just, not just football, uh, in phases off the field and in the locker room, in the weight room, and all those things in the classroom. And that's how championships are built. They're not, they're not built by just what you do on the field. You better be accountable to what you do everywhere. And was the four-place sequence inside the five, was that simply a – Reflection of poor execution that debilitated the team all day. Yeah, probably, and I don't really know the four plays. I can't think of them off the top of my head, but um, um, we have a chance. We've we've got to close drives out. Period. We we have to, and that was another reason we needed to go for that. We we can't keep going down there and, and getting three points. Uh, we need to stick it in and get seven. And there was no hesitation by myself, by Mass, anything. We we needed to get touchdowns, and uh, 
Um, we didn't come here to just try to get a few points and see how we can survive. We come here to try to win and score touchdowns. And that first drive could have been critical for us to answer a big drive that they have with our own big drive and tie that thing up at seven. I don't know if things change. Maybe they don't, but uh, the, it sure changes the morale. And was Will kind of a hyper focus of their defense once you got in the red zone there? Probably. Uh, but uh, uh, they just did a, a nice job of, and I, I think, I know we threw one pass, and, and I don't know if he was under duress or um, if we didn't, didn't get open. I have no idea. I couldn't see it. It was on the other sideline. But uh, um, bottom line is we need to be uh, executing uh, better in the red zone and, and take it on the other side. They have a third and seven or something, and, and uh, they throw it to their big kid in the back of the end zone, and we're there. We've got to make those plays. You know, they, uh, they were able to execute in the red zone. We did. Thank you. All right, Coach, thank you. All right, thanks, guys.